Hello, and welcome to Skeptic Mysteries, where we find unsolved mysteries and research them in an attempt to find the truth. Today, we will be researching the mystery of the elusive Chupacabra. According to the ABC7 archive and National Geographic, the Chupacabra, Spanish for goat sucker, kills and sucks the blood of livestock including goats and cows. And today, we will be delving into this mystery and prove the Chupacabra as either fact or fiction. We'll start with interviews from various supposed eyewitnesses, and then finally conclude with a verdict. According to wonderplus.org, the first alleged sightings of the Chupacabra occurred in Puerto Rico in as early as 1995. Our first eyewitness is Pedro Juarez, a native of Puerto Rico who claims to have been victimized by the Chupacabra. Let's take a look. So, Pedro, you claim to have found your livestock and mutilated with no apparent cause of death? Yes, senor. And it was the chupacabra, you said? Yes, and the chupacabra, no es bueno. But what if it was a coyote or any other possibility? I saw it run away. Oh, really? And what did it look like? Big and scaly, going spikes on its back like when I saw my mother moisturizing her frijoles. <laughs> and you saw it run away? Yes. When was this again? In the noche. So it was dark. Un poco. Right, well... Thank you for your time, Mr. Juarez, and I really hope you find whatever kills the livestock. Yes, yes, senor. Pedro's description and story sounded a bit far-fetched, so we decided to move on to our next witness, Keith Daniels of Southern Texas, a local farmer who had also been supposedly victimized. So, Mr. Daniels, tell me your story. What happened? Gee, well, I was heard some grain and I heard my goats a hollering. Something fearful, so I, I looked and there was a daggum chupacabra. Then, well, I grabbed my 12 gauge, but before I knew the daggum critter vanished. So, you saw it in action. What did it look like? Well, she, it all happened so fast, I'd say about the size of a dog. Not a speck of hair, big ol' eyes, and teeth. According to monstermethana.org, the Texan and Latino version of the beast differ, and Keith's description hits it right on the nose. Did it ever occur to you that it could just be a coyote or any other canine with mange? A who now? Well, according to Princeton University, the chupacabra could easily be a canine with mange, a skin disease that leaves the animal hairless and weak, causing it to go after livestock rather than its normal prey. I don't understand the daggone thing you see right there, son. That's okay, Keith. That was for the audience, not you. Thank you for your time. Our final stop was Austin, Texas, to interview Harvard graduate and scientist Neil Hathaway. Yeah, again. So, Mr. Hathaway, you obviously know about the legend of the Chupacabra around here in Texas. So what's your take on it? It is highly improbable. How so? Well, first of all, it just isn't biologically possible. In order for a species to survive, it must have at least a few hundred individuals, which Chupacabra obviously does not have. Alright, and all of the supposed sightings and captures? What about that? All captured creatures that fit the hairless canine description all turned out to be an animal with mange. And as for the reptilian with spines, there is no photographic or physical evidence. It just isn't scientifically possible. Very insightful. After all of our research, we finally reached a verdict. Chupacabra is not real. There's simply too much fact supporting its non-existence and not enough evidence to prove it as real. The chupacabra is not real, so whatever has been killing all those livestock surely doesn't have scales and a spiny back. Thank you for watching today, and join us again next time when we solve the mystery of why they didn't just give the ball to Marshawn Lynch. Good night, everybody. Grandma, I got ran over by an attacker. <laughs> <laughs>